opening eye this week had a day full of announcements. And some people said that those new products they launched are gonna basically send out of business thousands of startups. I am a startup entrepreneur. I wanna try to do two things today. One is explain you what the hell do they announce and what that means for consumers, but also for developers, and then give you a little bit of my considerations. And I'm gonna end the video telling you if I'm scared or not of these new products. So let's talk about the new announcements. We're gonna divide them into two groups. One is new announcements for consumer products, basically new ChatGPT stuff, and then new announcements for developers and for people to build companies on top of the OpenAI technology. But don't worry, I'm gonna make this super easy to understand even if you're not a developer. Let's start with the consumers announcement. There were two main ones. One is kind of boring, but it's pretty cool. And the other one is super exciting. Let's start with the boring one first. They increased the context length. What is the context length? Now, you cannot paste anything that you want into ChatGPT. There's a limit. If you want to paste an entire book, it wouldn't work. Now, they increased this context length from 32,000 tokens. I'm going to explain what tokens are in a minute. All the way to 128,000 tokens. A token is basically uh, part of a word. Um, it's a unit of language that ChatGPT understands. For the sake of this argument, just imagine that a token is a word, okay? If you're a paid user of ChatGPT, right now you have to pick between four modalities. GPT-4 Classic, which is basically just writing. Dolly 3, which allows you to create images. GPT-4 with browsing, which allows you to connect to the internet. And something called Code Interpreter or Advanced Data Analysis, which basically allows GPT-4 to write and execute code. And it was kind of annoying before because you had to switch between those different functions. And if you were, let's say, using the one that browsed with Bing, you couldn't create images. You had to start a new chat and basically switch different mode. From now on, no more choosing. GPT-4 is going to be able by itself to understand what you want to do. And so if he understands that you need text, it's just gonna give you text. If it understands that you need to generate an image, it's gonna do that. If it understands that it would be nice to search the internet to complete your task, it's gonna do that too. And if it thinks that writing code could be helpful, if for instance, you wanna generate, I don't know, a CSV file or something like this, or you need to maybe do some math, well then it's gonna do that as well without you having to specify that, which is pretty cool. But now let's get into the juicy stuff. This is the most controversial announcement. OpenAI announced something called GPTs. These are basically custom versions of ChatGPT that anybody can build and sell through something that is gonna look like the OpenAI App Store. Let's make a concrete example. Let's say you are a chef, and let's say that you have created some custom amazing recipes. What you could do is that you could create your own GPT. This GPT will have Two things that you can specify. One, it's its behavior. So you can say, hey, act as cook GPT, you are a cooking assistant, you're gonna give recommendations to your users on what to cook, you're gonna ask what kind of ingredients, and a bunch of different things. So you can specify the behavior and you can also upload your own custom data. So for instance, you can upload your cookbook and you can tell your GPT, hey, reference your cookbook when you speak to the user. So. This is pretty cool because one of the pains that I think people have when they use ChatGPT is that it can do anything. And so very frustrating because you don't know what to expect and maybe you don't know what are the right use cases. Whereas now with GPTs, you're going to be able to select a use case and you're going to have a custom experience specific to that use case, which is good. But the most exciting thing, the thing that people are freaking out about is the fact that if you create a GPT, which by the way, it's very easy to create. You can code it with natural language, so you can just basically type what you want. Then you can sell it. You can put it on this marketplace and basically make money off of it. OpenAI is going to give you parts of their revenues. They didn't disclose how much or how they're going to calculate this, but you can make money with this. And this is what a lot of people say may send a lot of startups out of business because suddenly, well, if I have a product, let's say um, an education app, which is what I'm trying to build. Well, then somebody else may build a similar application within the ChatGPT ecosystem. And this person is obviously going to have an advantage in distribution. And people may decide to go for that, let's say, within ChatGPT ecosystem experience and ditch my product. So this is 
controversial. Now, I have a few thoughts about this, but I'm gonna tell them in the end of the video, because there's a few other things that I wanna talk about. Another small announcement is that they updated the last training date for GPT-4. Before, GPT-4 knew nothing that happened after September 2021. And by the way, this was not actually true, because there were some specific events, like for instance, the war in Ukraine, which GPT-4 knew about. So some specific things were added later. But now they moved the end of the training to April 2023, which means that it knows a lot more. And by the way, this is going to be extended in the future as well. Now let's get into the developer part, and I'm going to make it super easy to understand for anybody, even if you're not a developer. So OpenAI sells something called an API, which if you're not a developer, is basically a technology that allows you to integrate the same capabilities of ChatGPT within your product in exchange for a little bit of money. Now let's start with the interesting thing. There's a little bit of money became even less money. Cost of this API, you pay per token, so per amount of text that your users send, has been decreased by up to three times, so up to 66% discount, which is pretty amazing and is going to help a lot of people integrate those capabilities in their products while keeping to make a profit. Also released the API for GPT with Vision, so now developers like me could potentially integrate Vision-like capabilities within the products and the Dolly 3 API, which allows people to generate images within an app. So now, for instance, I could make an app that creates, let's say, websites, and I would be able to use Dolly 3 to generate the graphics for this website. They release two other models as well. One is called Whisper V3, which is a speech-to-text model. It's an AI algorithm that transcribes speech. So you could, I could take this video now and transcribe it. In fact, I think I'm going to do it. And then they released also a text-to-speech model, which is a model that takes raw text and generates speech, like a natural sounding voice. These are the same models that you listen to when you use GPT-4 with your voice. It's a very natural sounding voice, and now any developer can integrate it into the product. The last thing that they introduced for developers is something called the Assistant API. So this is a little bit weird, because a lot of people think it's a consumer product because if it's very easy to test so it feels like it's a consumer kind of thing but it's actually meant to be for developers what it does is that it makes even easier for developers to integrate ChatGPT into their products in two ways one is that it creates something called threads so in the past if you wanted to integrate ChatGPT in your product and a user will send let's say 10 messages you will have to store those 10 messages and the 10 answers somewhere in a database and manage that, which is not that hard, but it's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Right now, you don't need to do it anymore. With the Assistant API, you're going to have something called a Thread ID. It's a unique code that references a user conversation. And so it's enough to store that little sequence of characters and the ChatGPT API is going to remember everything about the conversation, which is pretty nice. The other thing that is amazing is that it's going to enable also to do retrieval, which means that you can upload very large documents, thousands of pages even, if you want to. ChatGPT is going to have the capability of picking the right parts from this document whenever it's required based on the prompt from the user. This thing was possible also before, but as a developer, you will have to do a lot of different things. You will have to do a chunking algorithm, embed them, set up a retrieval strategy, blah, 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 blah. None of that anymore. It's very easy. Last but not least, they also opened up the opportunity of fine-tuning the GPT-4 model with your own data. This is something you could do potentially just be with the GPT-3.5 Turbo model, now you can do it with all the OpenAI models. This means that you could potentially send a bunch of documents or knowledge, whatever you want, as much knowledge as you want to OpenAI, they're gonna fine-tune GPT-4, so basically retrain it a little bit, and then this becomes your own model, which you and only you can use, which is nice. Now, my comments. What does this mean? The tension here is between these two different, almost contradictory strategies that OpenAI is having. From one side, it's making it easier for developers to integrate those models in their products with the Assistant API, with all the things that I've just told you about. But on the other hand, it's creating those GPTs, which seem to fight with the other strategy, 
Because as a developer, what I am seeing, I'll tell you how I feel about this, okay? From one point, I see this assistant API and I think, Jesus Christ, it's gonna be so easy to integrate it. But on the other side, I look at GPTs and think, wait, OpenAI is competing with me. So is OpenAI trying to help me or are they trying to kill me? And a few of my friends actually made me notice something pretty interesting. This seems like what Amazon does. Amazon allows people to sell products on their platform, but then they also sell products. So some people argue that Amazon is using data from what is working, what people are building. What is, you know, what is market demand? And then it's using those information to create their own products and then cut out market share from the people they're supposed to serve, from developers. I think this may be what they're trying to do, but I have another theory. There's one thing that not a lot of people have talked about. The fact that they reduced so much the cost of their API. This makes me think that they're starting to face competition. If it's true that they're going so well, they say they have 100 million weekly active users. We don't know how many of these are paying, though. It is true that 92% of Fortune 500 companies are using their technology. Then why the hell are they reducing price? Sure, to gain more market share, 100%. But at some point, they're going to have to make money. So what I think instead is that their GPTs move. So the fact that now anybody is gonna be able to create those applications and sell them to a marketplace is a way for them to create a network effect, to lock people in the ecosystem because they're afraid of competition. They are afraid that people like me may build using OpenAI technology, but at some point they're gonna to switch to something else. I'm gonna to switch to the Anthropic API, to the Google API, to whatever that is. And so I believe that they're trying to create an ecosystem that is consolidated, that has a lot of lock-in, and that creates those network effects that are gonna force people to stay in. This is probably the reason why they're doing this. But I wanna say something else, which is, how do I feel as a startup entrepreneur? Well, um, initially I was a bit stressed, I have to say, I have to be honest, because I thought, well, there's a lot of people that can create pretty good experiences now without any effort. And their products are gonna be maybe not as good as a custom product that I can build with code, but a GPT may get close enough. And that is scary, obviously. However, I realized that OpenAI is making a big bet, a huge bet, is betting on the fact that the future of user interfaces is going to be chat-based. And I don't think so. That's it. I don't think they're right. I think that a chat-based interface may be nice for some use cases, but not for everything. So if you're trying to make a cookbook app, for instance, the example that I made before, it would be nice to chat to a cookbook AI. However, maybe I want to have pictures in, maybe I want to have some guides, maybe I want to have some different kind of UX. And GPTs are going to be strictly closed to text. This means though that if you're a startup entrepreneur like me, this is what I've been thinking about, there's no space anymore to not be ambitious. There's no space anymore to make very simple experiences uh, based on a chat-like interface. You either go bold or you go home. Either you take big risks and try to revolutionize any industry that you're playing with or just don't even bother because people are gonna use OpenAI's GPT's technology and that's it. So honestly, if a bunch of startups go out of business, probably that's a good thing. Probably these are startups that are not really pushing innovation further. And maybe they should go out of business. And this is going to just leave space to the startups that are actually pushing the limits of what we can do and what we can dream about with this new super crazy powerful technology. Now, these are my thoughts. I hope this was valuable for you. If it was, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know down in the comments. What are the things that were the most interesting about this video and what do you think? What is the future of technology thanks to AI? I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!